Hello, and welcome to another Reaper tutorial. Today I wanted to talk to you about a few different methods for sharing projects and collaborating with others remotely. This is always a really confusing thing for folks who are new to audio software, so hopefully this gets you confidently sharing projects with your collaborators and making more hot, hot tracks together. This is going to be the long video that will explain the why as well as the how. So if you just want the short how-to video, you can click the link in the description and I'll just show you what buttons to press to do the thing. We're going to cover how to share full Reaper projects versus sharing what are sometimes called stems or individual audio tracks, and the pros and cons with each of those methods. First, we'll start by sharing a full project, because that's the first instinct a lot of people have when working with audio software, but it requires a little bit of setup and finesse when using Reaper. So here's the deal. You can't just send the Reaper project file to another person without any other information along with it and have it look and work how it does on your computer. So this is probably what people are seeing if you just sent a project folder with no other audio or information along with it. There's still spaces for the audio in here. You can see there's media items, but they're all marked as offline. And the person who opens the project file will probably get a lot of errors upon opening it. What's happening here is the project file only stores references to the original audio files. It's like telling Reaper, hey, the last 30 seconds of this audio here, uh, it's located in a specific audio folder on the computer, and uh, we're going to start it at 31 seconds in the Reaper project and end it at like 57 seconds. Got it? Great. So this works well when Reaper knows where the folder is and where the file is within that folder. But when you take this to another person's computer and that folder and file no longer exist, Reaper doesn't know what to do. So it just stores all of the uh, boundaries that we set because it knows those, that's great, but it doesn't know where the audio is to fill those uh, boundaries. I have an analogy that will hopefully help you understand this a little bit better. I want you to imagine you're giving someone instructions on how to get to your favorite pizza place by saying, it's three blocks north of here. Those instructions work because of the current location you're at. If that person goes to a different city and tries to find that same pizza place by going three blocks north of here, they'll probably just end up at a Starbucks instead because that pizza place doesn't exist three blocks north of their current location. And that's just sad. But fear not, we can still send Reaper projects to other people. We just need to make sure that we're also sending everything Reaper needs in order to follow its own project instructions. That will require a little bit of setup, but once you do it, you never need to touch this again. First, we're gonna head into the project settings, and then we're gonna go to the media tab. And in this first box here, I want you to type in audio files, just like you're seeing here. And a couple important things about this, we don't wanna select browse and go find a folder on our computer. That will put every single audio file that we record into the same folder. And if you're gonna send a project file to another person and that person doesn't have the exact same folder in the exact same location with the same name, Reaper won't be able to locate the files. So what we've done instead with this is we've told Reaper anytime we record something, put it inside of a folder called audio files. And since we haven't told it specifically where to put it on our computer, we haven't given it an address, it will put it in the same folder as the project file. This is important and I'll show you why in 158 seconds. Next, you'll wanna change the on import of media to project selection to copy media to project path. This will make sure that anything you put in your project will also end up in the audio files folder so you don't have to worry about whether the sample you dragged in will end up in the right place when you send it to someone else. Now that you've done all this, in the bottom right corner you can click save as default project settings because this is probably what we're going to want forever. And you don't have to do this every single time you start a project anymore, which is great. So now we're well on our way to being able to share full Reaper projects with our collaborators. But what I wanna do now is start a new project and show you how this works. So once you start a new project, I want you to immediately hit save. Uh, you can use Control S or File Save Project. 
And if you're using an existing project, you can do this exact same thing by just clicking Save Project As. When this window opens, take a look toward the bottom of the window where you have all these different options here. You'll want to check the Create Subdirectory for Project option. And then I like to use the Copy All Media into Project Directory option rather than Move All Media, and I'll explain why in a second. So what we've done here is we've told Reaper to create a new folder that contains everything needed to run the project. And if there's media that came from outside of this folder, we're going to copy it in rather than moving it. And the reason I do this is let's say you pull in a sample um, from like a folder like this, where you have a bunch of different samples inside of it, and you do not want to move something like this into this project and then have it disappear from this folder because that makes it harder to find these samples when you need them later. So copying them keeps the folder in the same place, but it also gives Reaper access to it so that you can send it to collaborators and they will also have access to it. So now here comes the aha moment. Once you've done all of this, we'll call this collab. Once you've saved this, you can now just save a project file and it will create that folder for you. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. You saw me just save the One Punch Man collab uh, project. I can go into this folder and see that I have the project file and this audio files folder that contains all of the audio files needed to regenerate this project. And you can see that it kind of looks like it's offline now, but that's just because I don't have Reaper selected as my active window. But what's cool about this is since I copied it, this old version of the project, One Punch Man 1, I'm sorry, not that one, One Punch Man, the regular one, still has all the original audio files in it, including some other ones. So once you've done all this, you're able to just save a project and it will keep everything nice and organized for you. So when you're ready to send it to someone else, you'll send them the project folder rather than the project file. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So this is a folder containing a bunch of different project folders. Unfortunately, they don't look different than anything else, but inside of them, there's a Reaper project file and a folder that contains the audio files. And remember, this is the thing we set up in project settings. So if you named this uh, potato, it would show up as potato. And inside of it are all of the audio files needed to run the project appropriately. So like before, when, when we sent a Reaper project uh, and, and the Reaper session didn't know where the guitar to audio was, now it will, it will always know that, but you don't send the project file. You will go up one level and send your collaborator this entire folder. So that was a lot. <laughs> so thanks for hanging in there with me, but I think understanding how this works is useful and will help you confidently share things back and forth with collaborators. Now, there's still a couple things to consider if you're going to share project folders back and forth in this way. If you use any plugins that your collaborator doesn't have, they'll show up as deactivated when they open the project and they probably won't be able to use them. So this is especially important if you use anything like Guitar Rig or Amplitube or any virtual instruments. Uh, they won't sound the same when you send them to someone else. But you can get around this pretty easily. So if you have some tracks that have effects you want to keep on them, like let's say I, this bassoon two track, I, I want to keep all these effects when I send it out to somebody. If you select this track over here on the left side, you can right click, go to render slash freeze tracks, and you can freeze the track and you can freeze it to mono, stereo, multi-channel, depending on what it is. So I'm going to click this. And what freezing does is it renders your tracks with all the effects on it but it stores what it, was, uh, what it was before it froze. So you can go back to the originals at any point. But you should note that once a track is frozen, it'll show up as locked when you initially freeze it. If you unlock it and then start moving it around and continuing to play with it, um, it'll do some funky things if you try to unfreeze it later. So it'll give you this warning, they've been edited and uh, the edits will be discarded. 
So when you go back, you notice that like, oh, it didn't return it to the original original. It like added these weird edits in here. And, you know, that's not always what you're looking for. It's great because it stores the effects, but you have to make sure that uh, you don't start editing things afterward because they won't be saved. So usually if you start freezing things, I recommend saving a new version of your project with like underscore freeze after it. So like, let's say I want to save project as I don't need these things anymore. I actually don't want them anymore because I just want to save another version of the project file called one punch man freeze. And so now that is the one that, uh, that has the frozen things in there. And so you can mix project files in your project folder. Uh, you just want to be clear which one the collaborator is going to need to use. All right, and one last important thing to note is that your collaborator will need to have Reaper in order to use the project file. So if they don't have Reaper, they won't be able to listen to what you've done or use it in any way. And if you're sending people files to add to other projects, I'd recommend another method of sharing files rather than this project sharing method. I do think sharing full project files is useful if you want to get feedback or help with uh, mixing or mastering, but it's not usually the way I recommend sharing files with collaborators when you're contributing to a recording project, for example. For that kind of sharing, I would either export stems or individual audio tracks. And hey, that's a great segue to start talking about how to do that. You may have heard the term stem before, and if you're like me, you don't know exactly what a stem is. You just say it and smile and pretend. But uh, what a stem is, is essentially a collection of tracks within your digital audio workstation or DAW that are exported as a single audio file. So a stem can be one track, it can be five tracks, it can be 500 tracks, and uh, a stem can be rendered to mono, stereo, or surround. Uh, really any options that you want, you can export a stem as. I think the term individual audio file is a little more fitting for what we're going to be talking about, but I'll use stem because that's what they're called in Reaper, but it's like a, all individual audio files are stems, but not all stems are individual audio files situation. This method is going to help you send stems that are easy for your collaborators to use, and they won't have to deal with syncing your tracks up when they get them from you. Let's say you're recording multiple bassoon parts for your friend Jenny's song, and she's going to handle the mixing. So she sent over a click track that she wants you to play along with. And you've recorded your tracks, you've made some stretch marker edits, you've sliced things up, pitch corrected them, and done all of that. And now you want to send this back to Jenny. What Jenny wants is the individual bassoon tracks and not all of them together. So Reaper gives us a way of doing that really easily while keeping them all perfectly aligned for your collaborator. First, if your collaborator sent over a click track or a reference audio for you to play along with, which in this case Jenny did, you're going to want to make your time selection the length of the longest thing they sent over. And you can do this by holding down shift and double clicking on the longest media item they sent over. So in this case, it's the click track. Now you'll want to click and highlight only the tracks that you want to share with Jenny. So I want to share all six of these tracks here. So I'm going to uh, click and highlight all of them. Then you're going to go to file and render. And in the top left of the render window, you'll want to make sure that stems selected tracks is the option you've got selected. And at the top right, you'll want to select time selection in the bounds area. You can keep this tail on if you'd like. It's not as important as making sure the beginning of the track is correct. Now you'll want to make sure you know what format your collaborator wants files in because some people are really picky about this, others aren't, um, but it's always a good idea to ask. I default to WAV files with a 48,000 sample rate and 24 bit uh, bit depth. So I really like organizing my files into folders and I wanted to show you what I do when I'm sending stems. So if you've set up your project file like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can easily create new folders in the same place as the project file by adding backslashes to this file name uh, text box here. So if you add backslash renders, or it might work as just renders backslash, yeah. 
if you add renders backslash, this creates a folder called renders in the project folder. And this is great because I don't like to have to uh, define each name of a file that I'm gonna make. So after I make that folder, I'm going to use a wildcard to get the uh, track, actually I'm gonna get the parent name because I wanna use this bassoon wet folder as part of the name. And then which track is it? Dollar sign track. So every folder is going to be named bassoon wet underscore whatever the track name is. Uh, I really like wildcards. I don't think that everybody necessarily needs to use them, but it's a great way of automating file naming. And uh, if you want to learn more, you can click on this here, and there's a lot of uh, cool wildcards you can use. So after I do the wildcards, I want to make sure that I name it with the project name as well. So we'll call this Jenny's song. Now, when you select render, it will render all six of these individual tracks with unique file names that are easy to distinguish in a pool of files. Once you've got those files rendered, you can send them directly to your collaborator. And so these are gonna be in our project folder, which was One Punch Man Collab. Under renders, all of these files are automatically named for us and they are exactly the same size and length, which is exactly what we want. So I would let the collaborator know that you made them the exact length of you know whatever track that you used as your reference. So if it's a click track, I would say, hey, this is exactly as long as the click track you sent over so that they know where to drop them into the DAW. Because ultimately, I want these tracks to be easy to work with and I want the collaborator to have an easy time lining things up and working with my audio files. And this process of exporting stems will eliminate the time it takes for them to start working with your audio. So let me show you what this looks like when you actually drag these into a project now. And now these are all the same length as this click track that we had here. They should be the exact same length as the time selection. So I'm just gonna line them up. And look at that. Now, if you remember, there was a little bit of a tail that we added on in the render settings. This tail box was checked. So it's going to extend beyond the time selection here. And the reason this is, is nice is if you have any like reverb plugins or anything on your tracks, it'll usually catch them if you add a tail rather than just cutting them off before they're uh, fully finished. So that's it for sharing projects and files with collaborators. This is something that caused me a lot of anxiety when I was first starting to share my files with people remotely for audio projects. And I've personally experienced the horrors now of having 40 people send files to me that start at different points and have names like IMG00158P4. It's not a fun experience. So. I hope this video uh, gives you some confidence in sending files and projects back and forth, and I hope that it helps you reap the benefits of Reaper.